So I'm, I'm going to discuss something today that I'll refer to as the, uh, the healthcare problem. What we're going to do is look, we're going to start with this data set you have here. And, and what this represents is the following. Horizontally, on along the x-axis, we have the year. And vertically, this is the annual cost for our family of four uh, to buy a health insurance plan. Okay, so for example, if you plan to go to the doctor or if you think, you know, any, any kind of medical issues you might have during the year, it's always advisable to have a health insurance plan to sort of protect your family's wealth and so forth in the event of needing some kind of, you know, major health event and need and the cost that goes with that. So what you can see is, for example, if we look at 2002, uh, a health insurance plan would cost around $9,235 on average in the United States to cover uh, a family of four and, um, and their kids. And you notice throughout the years, you can see this general upward trend. And then here we are by 2013, uh, as of right now, this, the expected cost on average for a plan is about $22,000. Uh, per year. Generally, people either some people buy their own health insurance plans and pay for them themselves. Uh, you can look at that number of twenty-two thousand and realize, wow, that's a lot of money. That's almost two thousand dollars a month you'd have to spend just uh, just to keep your family covered. Um, often, it's the case that an employer would pay a good portion of that, so that maybe you wouldn't have to bear the, the full cost of the twenty-two thousand dollars a year. Maybe you pay half of it, or in some cases, you only pay. You know, with generous employers, you might only pay 20 or even as low as 10% of that total bill. So it varies. So here's what I'd like to do. Generally, um, costs like this go up by a certain percentage every year, which would make us think that an exponential model would be the best fit for a set of data like this. But clearly, you can see there are years where the vertical jumps are bigger than others. Um, so it might make sense to draw a few models and then try to get a sense on average of, of what's happening. So what we're going to do is we're going we're to pick a couple of years. So for example, I'm going to pick the year 2002 to 2006. And you have two points on, on the graph then that look like that. So that gives us some kind of exponential equation. And then I'm going to do it again. But, and the second time, I'm just sort of randomly doing this, I'm going to pick maybe um, 2007 and 2013. I'll pick those two data points and get an exponential equation that goes through those. And uh, who knows? We'll see if they have the same growth rate and, and things like that. So that's what, that's what we're going to do. All right. So to do this, what you'd like to do is identify um, the two points that you want your exponential equation to go through. So let's look at, at this one here. This would be the point 2002, 9,285. And then over here, here's the point. 2006, comma, 13,382. Okay. So we're going to take those two points. We're going to use them to get our equation. Let's go and do that. Okay. All right. Now, I think it's advisable for the to make calculations a little bit easier. We're going to say we're going to let x equal years since 2000. Okay. And if we do that, then our data points change. The first data point is 2, comma, 9285. And our second data point is 6, comma, 13,382. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay. So how do we find an exponential equation that goes through this data? Okay, we've gone over this before. There's a different video you can watch that would explain that. But we know our equation is going to look like this. Y equals A times V to the X to be the general form of the equation. And I would say it would be really nice if one of these x values up here were 0, because we'd be able to plug it in. And when we plugged it in, we get b to 0, which would be 1, and we just know a right away. But that didn't happen, okay? at least not the way we set up our variable. Yet. So what we're going to do instead is, is uh, we're going to plug both points in. So I guess I'll start with the first point. I'll sub that in first. So we get 13,382 equals a times b to the sixth. And then here, we're going to have 9,285 equals a times b to the second. Okay. And our goal is to figure out a and b. 
we can do that, uh, we'll have an equation which models uh, the red the red graph. I should have made that color coded, but it'll be okay. So we're going to divide these, and the nice thing about dividing these is that those a's cancel for you right away, right? Additionally, b to the sixth divided by b squared is b to the fourth. All right. So now I need to just get a calculator and divide that other thing. So when we divide those, I get 1.44. So now we're just one step away from getting b. We could raise both sides to the one fourth power, and we'll figure out uh, what b. You kind of see why that's going to work. And this, if you look over here on the right, you have four times one fourth. We multiply exponents when we have that situation, which would be one. So we're going to figure out what b is now. b is about. So we get an answer of about 1.095. That's what we're getting for our value, our value of b. All right. Um, so again, we know our equations of this form. It's y equals a times b to the x. So we can now write y equals a times 1.095 to the x. Now, before we even um, go to solve for a, I want you to look at this equation and notice what you see inside the parentheses here. See this, this base of our exponential function. We know our exponential functions generally look like 1 plus the rate. So that implies that our growth rate is 0 0.095 or 9.5%. That's a pretty fast growth rate. Okay, for those of you who might be new to exponential functions and trying to decide, hey, well, you know, what's considered quick and so forth, um, that's pretty quick. As a matter of fact, I can kind of mention this another time, something called the rule of 72. What the rule of 72 does is it gives you an estimate for the doubling time of a quantity based on the growth rate. What you do is you take 72 and you divide it by the percent growth rate, which is 9.5. If you do that, you get, you get about 7.6 years. That's a, that's a cute trick. We can discuss one day why that rule of 72 works. But what that means is, is that if we were to continue to see sustained growth, growth of 9.5%, we would expect this initial amount to double about every 7.6 years. Uh, that's, not, not, that's pretty fast, actually, generally. Uh, most things in, in life don't grow that quickly. Well, all right. So anyway, let's just take one of the points we had. We had the point 2, comma, 1, 2, comma, 9,285. I'm going to take that point, plug it in, and get A. So 9,285 equals A times 1.095 to the second power. So that means A is going to equal 9,285 over 1.095 squared, which gives us, this is about 7737. So now we finally have our equation. Our equation is y equals 7737 times 1.095, oops, hold on a second there, 095 to the x. So this is one possible model for the cost of a health insurance plan over time. And we created it using the first two data points we picked. We picked 2002 and 2006. Okay? So I'm going to say that that might not always be the case. We might get different growth rates or slightly different starting values if we were to look at um, maybe two other years where we didn't see as much growth. We might see something lower than 9.5% growth. Right. So let's go back to our data set. Let's pick those other two points. Um, from the look of it, the way I've drawn it, the blue curve looks like it's growing at a slower rate than the red curve. Uh, we'll have to see about that. So we're going to have the point 7, 14,500, and then 13, 22,030. So let's go redo this, this math again, see what happens. So 7, 14,500, and then we had 13, 22,030. Okay, so you can go do the same process. Again, so I'll get you started in this. So y equals a times b to the x. So we'll plug this point in first, 22030. 
equals a b to the 13th. And then 14500 equals a b to the 7th. We're going to divide these again because that cancels the a so nicely. Um, 13 minus 7 is 6. And that's going to be about 1.5 something maybe. 1.52 approximately. So then we'll get 1.52 to the 1 6th power. It's going to be B, which gives us that B is approximately 1.07. Right, that looks a little promising because that's a slower rate than the previous two points we picked, right? Previous two points we picked were gave us about a 9.5% growth rate. Now we're down around 7. All right, let's just finish this off. Um, so y equals a times 1.07 to the x. I'll plug in the first point we had. So 14,500 equals a times 1.07 to the seventh power, I believe, right? Yeah, it was seven. There it is. Okay. And then we divide. So we get 14,500 divided by 1.07 to the seventh power. It's approximately a. So then, well, that's equal to a actually. So a is approximately 9,029. Okay. Now we'll notice how you have a uh, drastically different y-intercept this time than previously. Okay. The claim is you shouldn't really be surprised about that. Okay. And the reason that you shouldn't be surprised is this. If we go back and look at the original picture, if we took that blue graph and we sort of let it extend all the way back to the y-axis, it's going to hit down here somewhere, whereas the red graph hit much lower. Okay, so you could see that these models, you know, these models perfectly tell us the story, right? But, um, but you know, so be it. All right, so what are we going to do now? Well, I'd like to do something to try and predict what healthcare costs are going to be in the future, right? Or at least in the near future. So I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to try and give like the best case scenario. So I think the best case scenario would be if I had the lowest y-intercept with the with the slowest growth rate. That would give the that would that would say, hey, this is the best that things could be. We'll start with the lowest y-intercept, which we got in the previous equation. Previous equation gives the y-axis around 7,737, right? And the growth rate of the other equation was lower. So I'm going to say here's our best case for the near future. When I say near future, I, we have to be careful with these equations because sometimes when we predict too far into the future, the equations really don't do a good job. So y is going to be about 7737 times 1.07 to the x. Now I should comment that it is possible that if we went back to this original graph of data, that there might have been two years I could have picked. Like I picked 2002, 2006, and then again 2007, 2013. I might have been able to pick two other years where I maybe I got even a lower growth rate. Okay, so this might not be the best best case scenario, but it is if we take the two things that we looked at. All right. So let's do a little, let's do a little predicting, right? Let's do a little predicting. So let's pretend I wanted to predict what health insurance should cost us in the year 2020, 2020, and actually not that far away. We would sub in 20 for X because remember X is years since 2000. And we'll get an estimate. So you get 7737 times 1.07 to the 20th power, and that's approximately, approximately 29,940 dollars. So here we are with our best case scenario, and what we've done is, is we predicted that health insurance in 2020, just about seven years from now, should cost about $29,949, $940 per year. Okay. The next video, what we're going to do is, is we're going to compare this to average salaries of people in the United States for the same years. 
and then you might get a bigger, a greater, better sense of how this health insurance issue might really be a problem. For example, uh, here we are in 2012, or we're in 2013 now, but look at 2012. Here's some information for us. The inflation adjusted, it just means that, that it's adjusted over time. The median salary is $51,000 per person per year. What that means is, is that that's the number that half the people in the country last year made more than, and half the people in the country made less than. So $51,000 a year is about the average, about the median salary for people in the United States in 2012. Let's just go back to our health insurance chart for a minute and just take a quick look at a number and circle this for you. <gasps> star, star, star. That was the cost of a family health insurance plan. So if you were a family last year in 2012 with one income, right, people in that class on average were bringing in $51,000 to the household, okay, and if they wanted to buy a full health insurance plan, right, it might have cost them around that number, $20,728. or $28. Hopefully they had an employer, if they worked for a big company, that paid some portion of that so they didn't have to really pay the $20,000 a year. But you can see how the ratio of the cost of a health insurance plan to median salary is not very promising. I'll state it that way. All right, so one little, one little thing to just highlight before we get into more, more analysis tomorrow. Just look at 2002 for a second. Here was the amount of money that people were bringing home in 2002 as a median salary, $41,624. And if we look at our chart of health insurance costs, you can't see it because I've written over it, but the number here is $9,285. So if you take $9,285 and divide it by $41,000, you're a little less than 25%. That is not true in 2012. 2012, you're taking $20,728 and dividing it by around $50,000, and you're getting a number that's much closer to 40%. 